a man has been sentenced to six years for plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan. You remember this, these white supremacists, these far right extremists, they got together, they had a full plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan and put her on trial, okay? A man, his name is Ty Garbin, upset over state ordered coronavirus restrictions was sentenced to just over six years in prison Wednesday for planning to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. A significant break that reflected this quick decision to cooperate and help agents build cases against others. Let's put up a picture of the governor, okay? That's your governor. She's the person that the state of Michigan elected. She was within her constitutional authority for every mandate she sent out. But these individuals, let's put up their pictures. They didn't like it. Now, they will tell you they're pro-American and pro-democracy and pro-patriot, but they are anti this governor and anti rule of law. Um, They had a full plot. Let's put up a picture of the cooperating witness who was down with this crew, okay? There he is, Ty Garbin. What did Donald Trump say about this when it happened? Do you remember? What was Trump's leadership here when literally the federal government had to stop a group of his supporters? Let me be very clear, they supported him 100%. They listened to him and they were radicalized by him. They were doing the bidding of Trump. Okay, what did Trump say when all of this went down? He said, and I quote, and we'll have to see if it's a problem, right? People are entitled to say, maybe it was a problem, maybe it wasn't. That's what he said. According to AP News, Ty Garvin admitted his role in the alleged scheme weeks after his arrest last fall. He is among six men charged in federal court, but the only one to plead guilty so far. It was a key victory for prosecutors as they try to prove an astonishing plot against the rest. Garvin apologized to the governor who was not in court and he apologized to our family. This individual said, and I quote, I cannot even begin to imagine the amount of stress and fear her family felt because of my actions. And for that, I am truly sorry. In the plea agreement, Garbin said the six men trained at his property near Luther, Michigan, constructing a shoot house to resemble Whitmer's vacation home and assaulting it with firearms, that is extreme strategy and preparation, okay? He only got six years, credit for time served, he'll be out soon. The government noting Garbin's exceptional cooperation. Now remember, they had plenty of evidence, okay? Ask US District Judge Robert Junker to give him credit for helping investigators reinforce their case against his co-defendants. The judge said, the constitution is designed to ensure that we work out our fundamental and different views peacefully. Not at the point of a gun, not with some other blunt force threat or a kidnapping conspiracy. Prosecutors recommended nine years, nine, but the judge said "Mm, basically six years because the judge, now get this, was convinced that Garvin was an excellent prospect to stay out of trouble when released from prison. Not because of the cooperation, not because of anything else other than the judge has somehow figured out Oh, this this poor young guy, I mean, he's not going to get in any more trouble. I mean, this was just a bad phase in his life. Dina Dahl, we see this routinely. 
white supremacists who are in fact domestic terrorists being treated like they just had a bad day. Yes, and also the fact that we're starting to see these militias take on bigger and bigger plots, right? I mean, we've had militia activity in our country for a long time, but to have some them actually try to kidnap the governor, and like you said, have not just had a thought about it, but the level of detail they went into the plan is kind of shocking. And then, you know, obviously the invasion of the Capitol, and it's all because you know Trump emboldened them and brought that into the mainstream, and. It is true that you know six years is not very long, but we do often see in criminal cases this happen. The first person who talks often gets what seems like a very unfair sentence. He is going to be testifying to the other five. Those other five, you know, they're going to probably, if unless they plead guilty, which so far they haven't, they're going to be tried by a jury, right, of their peers and. Who knows if some of their jury will be sympathetic to them. So the prosecutors are gonna have him testify as well. And I imagine between his testimony and the evidence they've collected, their case is gonna be really strong. And they should hopefully get which will be a much more fair sentence because uh, if it is only just this one person convicted for six years, that's like a you know horrible. But we're hoping the other five will have something more meaningful. Yeah, and and let me say this because I I definitely understand how the pieces are used against each other, right? But they had them under surveillance. They have text messages. They have other forms of communication. I even think a confidential informant was heavily involved here. They have the evidence, right? I know this makes it easier to prosecute. I get that. I understand that. But damn, let's just let's go the long route on this one. Let's go the long route on this one and damn his cooperation. And we're gonna prosecute all of them to the fullest extent of the law. What happened to that kind of prosecutorial conduct? Yeah. <laughs> 